marine biofouling a sticky problem. Non-indigenous species, which are also called as alien, exotic, invasive, or non-native, have transformed marine habitats around the world. Their introduction is recognized worldwide as one of the top five threats to marine ecosystem function and biodiversity. How? Some of these invaders displace native species which sometimes lead to extinctions. Another is by changing community structure and food webs and by altering fundamental processes such as nutrient cycling and sedimentation. They are also considered as one of the greatest threats to economy, especially to maritime industries, by diminishing fisheries, falling ships' hulls, and clogging intake pipes. Some can even directly impact human health by causing disease such as cholera. Studies have indicated that there are a number of vectors responsible for the introduction and translocation of non-indigenous marine species and most of these are brought about by anthropogenic dispersal that include the construction of canals, notably the Suez and Panama which connect waterways, falling and ballast transport along shipping lines, aquaculture, Aquarium species and habitat and wildlife trading, example is live rock, and deliberate introductions like for mariculture. And of these vectors, researchers have indicated that fouling have been facilitated most of the non-indigenous marine species introductions globally. So what is fouling? In general, Falling refers to the accumulation of deposits of various kinds and origin on the surface which may be products of corrosion, crystallization, chemical reaction, suspended particles, and the like. And one of its types is the biological falling or simply biofouling, which is defined by several authors as the colonization of varying organisms via settling, attachment, and growth on surfaces or any man-made structures immersed in water. And for non-indigenous marine species to be successfully translocated from a donor region and established in a recipient region, they must pass through and overcome a sequence of events. The species must first colonize and establish on a vessel's hull in a donor region. Second, they must survive the translocation on a vessel's hull from the donor to the recipient region. Next, they must reproduce or be dislodged in this region, then colonize available habitat, and be able to complete its life cycle in the recipient region. According to Little and Wagner, the succession of falling organisms consists of two stages, the microfalling stage and macrofalling stage. So this is the work of Skier showing the classical scheme of biofouling succession. So according to him, biofouling starts with the formation of a microbial film on the surface created by microorganisms such as bacteria and algae. This biofilm creates a favorable condition for the next colonizers. So this stage lasts 4 days to 2 to 3 weeks long. In the next stage, the surface will be colonized by fast-growing macrofowlers such as bryozoans, serpilids, and acidians. This is followed by slow-growing invertebrates such as mollusks and sponges. And there are also some other ways of community development. Since Balanus is less dependent to biofilm, it can settle right away during the first 2-3 to three weeks. So this succession ends with a shorter climax stage that is characterized by the dominance of bivalves which can be achieved within a few years. Other negative effects of biofouling in industries include surface corrosion and structural damage to aquatic infrastructures may it be made of metal, concrete, or wood. This poses health and safety concerns. It may also affect the fuel consumption and maintenance costs of marine vessels due to frictional resistance, speed reduction by 40% or more, corrosion, and increased vessel's weight which means less cargo. It was calculated by HIF that a layer of biofouling 150mm thick would increase loading by 42.5%.
It also increases aquaculture operating costs by 20 to 30 percent. And of course, biofouling does not only lead to the introduction of non-indigenous marine species, but it can also result in the alteration in the indigenous species composition inhabiting the area, eventually altering the environmental conditions. The rate of bioinvasions has been continuously increasing due to the expanded trade and traffic volume which devastated many areas in the world. This is why international bodies and agreements such as the International Maritime Organization, Convention on Biological Diversity, APEC, UNEP Regional Seas Conventions, and the Secretariat of the Pacific Regional Environment Program have recognized the negative impacts of these biofouling organisms. However, in the case of the Philippines, studies on the occurrence of biofoulers are still few. One of these is the work of Melody Ann Ocampo and her colleagues in 2014 that assessed the fouling community inhabiting in a man-made marina at Manila Bay. So they deployed the fowler collectors in five sampling points for just 60 days and a total of 9,725 fowlers were observed. And of these, about two species was identified to be an invasive organism namely Mytilopsis salae and the Brachydontes species. So this ends my presentation. I hope that you learned something from this. Thank you and mabuhay!